Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of A Tiger in Soft Pastel. I firstly want to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel here as today I reached 30,000 subscribers. I'm really delighted so thank you everyone who has supported my channel and if you haven't already then please do hit the subscribe button. This piece will also be available as a full length paint along tutorial on my Patreon channel. So this piece is on pastel matte paper. It's the brown colour of pastel matte and I decided to keep the background pretty simple, uh, create quite a dark background so that the tiger can really loom out from the shadows as this piece to me is all about the light and shade. And that's something that I talk about loads in the full length tutorial series. And that's an enormous series, possibly my biggest paint along yet, uh, totaling around 12 hours of paint along time. So it's pretty detailed. Um, I show you absolutely every mark that I put down and we talk about colour choices, how to create the light and shade that's in the photo reference. And if you join us over on Patreon, you'll also get access to the full high res version of the photo reference and I've also released a, a pack of other tiger photo references that my patrons can use royalty free. So this will be a huge series there's so much to learn from this piece and I kind of knew what to expect I've painted one tiger a very very long time ago and I didn't repeat the experience until now, so it says a lot because uh, it takes a lot of effort to get through this really large, detailed face. And I had some good photo reference uh, from uh, an animal refuge close to where I'm living, and this pose just really drew me in. It was mostly because of the light and shade that is cast right across his face and down his chest. It's often the lighting in a photo reference that makes me want to paint it. And I really thought that I wouldn't paint a tiger again unless I got a really good photo reference to work from. So I couldn't resist this one. And I'm hoping that many of you are going to enjoy painting this along with me because in that series, I take you step by step, working in real time, and I chat all the way through. So it was a bit of, bit of a marathon to get through. Um, I didn't obviously do it all in one sitting over the space of many, many days. And it definitely feels like a bit of a marathon. So I hope that if you decide to have a go at this, you'll enjoy having someone working right along with you, um, guiding you every step of the way and hopefully a bit of chat, although I'm not sure what I chatted about in that whole 12 hours. But I certainly enjoyed working on this. It was a challenge, but I love painting fur especially, so there's so much going on with this pattern. I'm also just about to release a cheetah tutorial series. So this month in particular, we're looking at a lot of complex patterns that you find in nature. So it will be interesting to compare the difference in creating stripes and spots. And there are some differences. I think I actually find the stripes more difficult. It's a lot more complex, this face. And of course, I'm using my lovely unison pastels. Lots of really warm tones, warm brown earths and red earths all sitting nicely against lots of blue violets that I've used on the shadow side of the face. I recently did a workshop with Unison Pastel online of a lioness and the set of colours that I designed for that I actually made use of them in this painting as well. I added a few other colours 
but you will get access to the full color list and materials list if you want to have a go at the full tutorial of this on my Patreon. But be warned, tigers are notoriously difficult. I have huge respect for animal artists, wildlife artists who paint a lot of these guys and sometimes on a huge scale. This piece is uh, 16 inches tall so it's not huge but it's big enough to allow for quite a lot of detail. So I talk a lot throughout the painting about the different types of marks I'm having to make and how I'm getting those marks out of the soft pastel sticks. I have lots of time to chat throughout the actual footage of this piece. I really took my time, tried to find all the most important details on the tiger and really do this impressive face justice because I'm not sure that I'll paint another one anytime soon so I thought I'd better put some effort in. And on pastel matte paper you can add a huge amount of detail. That's why I chose this paper. I love velour as well and I think he would have looked awesome on velour but because of how high resolution my photo reference was and how I could really see every individual little hair which is annoying at times as well. Sometimes if you're trying to get something that's a more painterly look it can be hard to see less detail. So in some cases it's even good to work from a slightly blurred photo reference if you're trying to be more painterly. But in this case I really wanted to go for every bit of detail on this. So next on my easel I'm planning a black panther. I seem to be having a bit of a run of big cats at the minute. I got quite a lovely selection of photo references recently and I'm keen to paint some of them. So I'm just working my way through the best of the images and hopefully I'll be able to make lots of these demos. So I'm also using some pastel pencils you can see. I've started talking a lot about this white pencil there that I was using, uh, the General's White. Um, I think the number is 4414 on that pencil if you're interested. It's a great white pencil. I'm really enjoying having that as part of my toolkit. And then I also use some Faber-Castell pencils. Um, there's a few Carbothellos. Um, I use a black Brunzeel. Uh, that's a Dutch brand. I like their black. So mostly the Faber Castells. But on the fur in particular, the use of the pencils is pretty limited. It's I would say 90% work with the soft pastels, with the sticks. And then I'm really just refining a bit with the pastel pencils. So another part of the painting where something goes from the shadows into the light. And it's those challenges that often make me want to paint a photo reference. Just one line between the light and the shade can make me really want to paint something. And that was definitely the case with this painting. There are many wonderful images of tigers. I've seen so many. It made me almost not want to go near that subject matter. But it's always the light and the shade that really attracts me to do a painting. 
So it's time for the whiskers. But don't be fooled because I'm really nowhere near finished. Even when I get the tiger finished, what I have ahead of me is still a bit of a challenge with the rocks and the, the green leaves. But the whiskers themselves posed enough challenges to keep me busy at this stage. And of course you'll see in full detail if you decide to work along with me in the paint along. But the rocks were the next thing that caused me a bit of a headache. I like painting rocks. Um, but at some point I went beyond the painterly look that I was hoping for. And yeah, I spent a lot of time on the rocks. And I talk about that during my process as well, because not everything goes straightforward for me. Sometimes something is really difficult and it takes me a while to achieve what I'm looking for. And in some cases, I don't manage it. But I think, I think I got at least the rocks to an acceptable point for me anyway. <laughs> So I was really looking forward to the green leaves though because it gives me uh, an opportunity to introduce some really vibrant green in the foreground which hopefully will work nicely against all of the red uh, red earth colours in the tiger. Also he's got green in his eyes, not as vibrant as this but I'm hoping that this little punch of green at the bottom of the composition might draw your eyes well to his eyes, of course. But I did wonder if it was a mistake to leave the rocks and the plants in. I could have possibly used some of my other photos of him to piece together the rest of his shoulder. But once you make the decision, then there's no going back. And I hoped that this little splash of green at the bottom of the composition would add enough to, well, tie it all together. So I spent a good bit of time trying to keep my marks mostly bigger on the rocks, trying to give the plants a sense of 3D. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this speedy version come together. And I'm currently working on the full length series to release on Patreon very soon. Please do hit the subscribe button. Thanks to the 30,000 people who have already. It's much appreciated. And I'll add links, of course, below the video for the Patreon tutorial series. But thanks very much for watching this. And until next time, happy passling.